Hello and welcome to the ROH Podcast, Season 2, Episode 8. As always, I am Caden Katanas, and joining me this week on the podcast for all your ROH and Zelda discussion needs are my revolving door of cohorts, comrades, and colleagues, the Canadian Nay. Hello. Mrs. No Days Off, Zello. Hello. And the Second City Saint, Django. How's it going? As you may notice, Mana isn't here this week. She is currently at the Calgary Comic Expo having all sorts of fun. She got waved to by Neil Patrick Harris. Sounds we, like fun. We probably won't see any sort of evidence of this, unfortunately. But she shall be back next week. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. It's the weekend. I'm ecstatic. It doesn't count as the weekend. I have like three papers to do. Well, and that's probably... I'm, I'm done like two of them, so I have one paper to do, but way too many things. Okay, then. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast, I would like to remind everyone once more to vote for us on top RP sites. If you have listened to the podcast the past few weeks, you may know that our spot on the site has been going in a direction I don't approve of. And unfortunately, the trend is continuing. We are, as of this recording, at 21st on the site. Oof. Boo. Well, I can only hope you three are voting every day. Highly a night skin doesn't have a vote button, so I keep forgetting. Yeah. I've, just been going, I've just been going to uh, ROH 7 to do it. I mean 6, my bad. Ah, uh, yes. As Nay mentioned, and as I mentioned last week, the Highland Knights theme does not have the buttons up yet. Why, I'm not sure. We still haven't figured that one out. But... As Django said, if you can, go to ROA 6 and vote, or switch over to Racial Rebel on ROA 7 and vote there. And if you aren't sure how to vote, when you are on Racial Rebels, click on the Triforce at the top of the page, or the banner at the bottom, and hopefully, with your votes, we will move to the first page. Now, now that that is out of the way, we will move on to the ROH discussion this week. It has been one week since ROH 7 opened, and some stuff has gone down. Characters have debuted, new characters, some returning, some that crossed over from 6. A few RPs have been established. Some interesting ones, I will say myself, at least, that I have read. Uh, And the four of us here has been part of several, I'm sure. Would anyone like to start talking about their RPs this week? I just say that I think a lot of people feel liberated, you know, with the start of ROH, and they have been letting their ideas fly. And I think it's allowed us an opportunity, of course, that fresh start, and to be able to play with ideas that wouldn't have been possible on 6. And, you know, that was the major reason why we decided to uh, bring in 7 into the equation. Currently, I'm working on role plays concerning the... Nay, what would you call our band of Ritos? Um, there are legally the Rito delegation for the Lon Lon Trade Festival. The, Ellie likes her really the official names. Yes. You know, we acted... The characters pretty much already knew each other as we got started, and it things just fell into place pretty easily. It's felt really natural role-playing the Ritos, and as far as it comes to the Grudos, it's been a little more interesting... On that side, in the sense that I'm still trying to get a feel for my character, but the interactions have proved proven to be beyond what I had expected. So it's given a sensation of character growth immediately. The, the interactions are, like, they're not people who are meeting each other for the first time in a tavern and, like, hi, mm-hmm. this is my name, this is what I like, and stuff. It's just, yeah. they already know each other, they're already have their, like, established friendship, and, yeah, it all works like that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's always very good, and, and fresh interactions as well, I would assume. Yes, I would say, actually, in the sense of a Temrus, considering that it's the mindset from 6 that has been transferred over to the one in 7, so he's completely, he is familiar with this world around him, but there are so many subtle changes to it that it feels completely foreign. He's learning how to get accustomed to these different expectations that have already been set out for him by his people and his crew and his friends, um, and having to either adapt to it or change it in accordance. 
or die trying. Uh, hopefully, he's not going to die. But I mean, it might be a possibility. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows what the future has in store? Exactly. Uh, 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 Nay, would you like to speak of your characters? What have well, they been up to the first week? Um, Zemo just um, transferred over from six mm-hmm. um, a couple days ago, and yeah, so she woke up in well, in six she fell off a cliff um, into a portal to another dimension, which makes more sense when uh, I actually had the context that her foster father, some evil warlock on Dole, uh, sort of baited her up there into the frozen wastes to take her to this other world where she never betrayed him by turning to the light side. And now she woke up in a hospital in Castle City in the other world. Um, She had been taken there by some good Samaritan farmer who discovered her dehydrated in the middle of Hyrule Field. And now she is being flirted at by Katerina. (laughs) How's that going for you so far? Um, just started, but um, she's she's kindly dissuading that. Well, that's unfortunate. She, uh, she she's just not into that. I see. So Billy is with Adara, who is one of the newer members um, who joined, I think, a month or so ago on Six and played the same character. Adara is stole some old man's wallet. And that, that's it. Like, she stole an old man's wallet, and Billy is a cop at uh, Romani Village. So he's trying to get the old man's wallet back. Carrie. Okay, Carrie is with Scarlet and Blight in Hyrule Field. And they're kind of biding time until the festival at the moment. Carrie's going to want to go there to participate in the arena, because she's really into arena fighting. Like, really into arena fighting. If you've read her latest post. Mm. Um, And, yeah, so Scarlet kind of is a little angry at her for being mean. How mean? Uh, Not that mean, actually. Just kind of, like, trying to break up a fight between her and the Dynolphos lieutenant, Silas. Well, nothing major, major has happened yet. I think all the huge things will start happening after the festival. Hmm. Of course. Uh, Django, anything you want to discuss with your character or characters? Um, the, o- the only real character that I brought back was uh, Deegan Wycliffe from ROH6. It's more along the lines of he, show- he showed up at Castle City thinking he was... Because he got a letter asking him to perform, to- but because of the upcoming festival... Turn, like turned him down, just like, oh yeah, your performance at this place can happen another day. Go to the festival instead. You'll have more fun. Hmm. And he's just like, okay. Well, I, I would assume yes, the festival would be far more fun than the uh, contract. Uh, what was the con- who was the contract for, or is that just a random plot point? That was just a random plot point. Ah, I see. Honestly, what he's really excited about, though, is being able to get up on stage and perform with a whole bunch of other characters who are more inclined toward music this time around or or like Faye for example and that and that one was a lot of fun because I think Mana we talked for we talked for a little bit about um because she knew which direction she wanted to take Faye in I believe when we started having these conversations and I thought to myself hey, if she's young enough, maybe um, Deegan could have a student this time around. So, and my first RP on 7 was with Faye. She, like, he asked her to, like, see how much she had improved, and she showed him. It was fun. He gave her a short lesson about finding a style, and then she ran off only to get caught by Skylar Jade. And then as far as other people go... Um, my other two characters are original Inherent to ROH7 only, a Gerudo, Kendra, Tuatara, and a Wizro, Revon Redmond. And, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's how you pronounce Revon. Ah, I was wondering okay. that. I was saying Riven the whole time. I, I was going Rivan. So. Very close. <laughs> but, um... 
Kendra basically just spent two posts hanging out on the beach with her four-year-old daughter, Isadora. And Rivon did what Zell described as the most metal thing ever. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and what was that? So I gave, so I gave Rivon, um, like, snake eyes, like, permanent red coloring on his eyelids, and scales that grow out of his uh, arms, legs, chest, and back. But he. Uh, but one thing I did with him is he he doesn't like having them because he wants to feel like a uh, normal person. So his first post was spent um, ripping the scales out of his body and then immediately healing the wounds. That's pretty to a to a very crappy extent. Uh-huh. So metal. It's extremely metal. Django, anything else you want to talk about, or is that it um, for your first week of ROH seven? I guess the only other thing I can say is like he went down, and apologized to uh, Denali and Vita, and then Vita healed him and took the scales that he ripped from his body as payment. That's that's not weird at all, right? Yeah, that's right? that's that, that's normal. I'm, I'm assuming. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah, tell. I was like really weirded out when you decided to have V to take the scales. I'm just like, what are you going to glean from them? Voodoo magic. Exactly. Probably. Except it's Raven <laughs> is going to become <laughs> Vita's servant. Spooky. There's there's one more thing about Reven, isn't there? Reven and Billy. Oh yeah. Um. Nay and I set it up so that uh, Rivon and Billy are distant cousins this time, because because vi- visually they look well. Obviously, you can't tell from Billy's avatar, but well, as for myself, I have been posting as Caden with his brother Cordell or Corey and Byron Kenico, another relatively new person. I don't know if anyone's been following that, but basically the uh, storyline there is that Byron, Kaneko's character, has found heavy mounted crossbows, mounted on wagons, that is. So, Ballistae? Ballistae, yes. Yeah. Um, but they're called heavy mounted crossbows for some reason. There were bandits that had Ballistae, which, for some reason, Caden was like, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming... Someone bought those, and they were like, no, someone probably made them or something. Then Byron's characters disappeared, and now I'm just kind of waiting for the festival to start. Which I'm pretty yeah. sure a lot of us are. And speaking of the festival, moving on to that. Originally, the festival was going to start today, but due to extenuating circumstances, it was moved to starting tomorrow. I know for myself, I don't have any major extensive plans for the festival. I'm more or less just going to interact with some characters, enjoy myself, probably getting some fun, wacky shenanigans because that's what this Caden's all about. Uh Nay, you kind of discussed a little bit of what your characters are doing. Uh, Would you like to talk further? Well, uh, Carrie is going to be at the festival, and she's probably going to... Well, she's going to head straight to the arena, I bet. I just don't have an opponent yet. I think I might do just an RP duel with Denali. Uh, Aspen said she might be interested in that. Um, Maybe arena fights someone else. I can't imagine she's just going to go dancing or anything, so she's probably going to be hanging around the arena the entire time. Maybe someone could force her to go elsewhere. She might go networking with other villainous characters. Actually, that's a good uh, good um, opportunity for her to do some villainous networking. In RP. Uh, Blatant you know. villain- villainous networking. Oh, I'll she's, be open. She's a very polite villain. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, anybody listening to this podcast, if you're evil, go find Carrie. She'll hook you up. <laughs> she's not hard to miss. She's just a giant suit of ebon armor. That's true. Um, Ellie's going to be there as well with Pavoli and Nadawi. Oh, it's a lot of E sounds. Yes, um, it is. Yeah, that, that's the whole thing involved with Rito. It's the E sound. 
Well, Ellie is short for elation, so I can't really say it's on purpose. Unless it ain't short for ejaculation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said at least. <laughs> I said at least it's not here. <laughs> that, that can stay in. Django has his guitar. He's going to be playing. Um, yeah, Ellie has her pan flute. I think she's probably going to play at some point. Maybe with Pavoli, who plays uh, a different guitar. And Nidawi should play the drums. I, I honestly believe that Nidawi is like the drummer of Ro if Aspen That'd decides be. to get, like, make him a drummer. That would be awesome. We need a drummer. Yes. Hearing this Aspen. The entire character is just screams drummer at me. <laughs> and yeah, that's... um. Though I am only taking two characters to the festival. Um, Billy's with Adara, and that's going to go on for some time, I think. And I don't want to bring everyone there. And Zemo's probably not going unless someone drags her. Well, she's still kind of sick, isn't she? Yeah, she's she's recovering from dehydration. But the real reason she's trapped in the city is because she in row six, she worked for Thera, who was the usurper queen of the Zora's domain. So her identification said that she was an employee of the Zora government. So the she's having her identity verified at the Zora embassy in Castle City, and that could go really, really wrong. In like, like she could end up in a lot of trouble, like mm. fraud. Ooh, scandalous! Ooh. But I think I'm gonna. I, I have a little something planned there, but I don't want to reveal it just yet. No spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, shame. <laughs> Zello? Along with what Nay said, I have Pavoli who plays acoustic guitar, and you know, we and Django have been talking about bringing people together who have, all have different musical skills and having you know, various people part of a van, part of a van, part of a band, and playing different sorts of songs. Um, Django will have a, a solo. He'll work with Faye, Pavoli, Ellie, and so on and so forth in different sorts of uh, performances. And I, I'll assume that they're going to meet beforehand and at least get one practice in before they perform. Or that might be a little bit of a stage fright involved with some characters, I would think. Hmm. Honestly, that- honestly, Django tends to... Uh, ad-lib all of his performances. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, That'll be interesting. Yeah, There might be some people who uh, pluck the wrong strings or play the wrong notes, but hopefully, overall, it'll be a good performance. Um, I'm also bringing Vita along. You know, um, she's on a ship heading to Lake Hylia and off to Cockrico River, well, they're, I think where they're going to anchor there and make their way to Lon Lon. Vita is immediately, well, probably not immediately, considering she probably has to talk with the Temris first about some issues, but she's going to go and brawl against some people. She's going to win. I'm you- just saying it now. I have the highest confidence in my character. Actually, that's a lie. <laughs> but. <laughs> Don't be too she's, confident now. I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll win one. Just have some fun in branching out more with her fighting style because it's a combination of brawling as well as her gift slash curse of being able to ma- manipulate life energy. But that's only it when in direct contact, so that'll be interesting to work with if people are willing to cooperate in testing that out. I will always ask beforehand before I pull some meta gaming. Don't worry. <laughs> No, don't ask. Just do it. No one will notice. I'm sure no. it won't cause any problems. If I made Rivon... a promise in my ticket that I would ask people. I'm not going to break that promise. If Rivon's going to be fighting Vita, I'll notice. Do you want to tell us about Vita's ability? Kind of akin to... Not exactly like Rogue from X-Men, but in the same sense that she has to be careful in a direct physical contact with people. Uh, Django's had a taste of how it works. She has to physically touch the person skin to skin to be able to open up a channel between their two flowing energies. And she can either pull out energy or put through energy. So it's kind of a sense of equivalent exchange 
however much energy she has in her person, or however much that person has, she can only take that much, or give that much, but it costs, you know, her life if she does, in that sense, her entire energy. Um, so she has to be very careful when she's interacting with people. She's always wearing gloves. She's always fully clothed. She doesn't. She's very meticulous in being careful when it comes to physical contact. So she's not a very intimate person in that sense because she doesn't want to hurt anyone or herself. Of course. <laughs> Django, anything you would like to add for your festival activities? Um, well, as Nay and Zell have already said, Deegan slash Django is going to be performing. Hope, like, possibly on his own, but maybe with everyone, hopefully. Yes, absolutely. But, um... You guys mentioned um, maybe he'll get to perform a duo or a duet with a Faye later, and I do hope that that gets to happen because um, I mean that that's kind of how um, Deegan got introduced to the spotlight because his teacher um, like put like gave him gave him like a stage name a fake name put him on stage and. Um, he, he just played his heart out along with his teacher and the crowd loved it. So I hope, I hope like I get to RP that experience out with um, Faye, but seeing as she escaped and has to be confined in the castle again, we will see what happens. We will see. But I, but um, Rivon is probably going to, um, go to the Coliseum, the arena, and uh, fight it out, maybe with Vita. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, originally, I was going to have um, Kendra go to the arena, but then I thought about it, and then I figured maybe, maybe Refund would be better suited for that. The only, the only reason Kendra is going is because her daughter begged her to. <laughs> so she'll probably be going around doing fun, frolicky festival things. It, maybe she'll even run into a Temeris. I don't know. Or, like, Denali. Who knows? It shall be seen. And speaking of festival things, uh, or activities, does anyone have any opinions or assumptions or guesses as to if anything big's going to happen at the festival? Someone, something dies... Somewhere something dies, something gets blown up, or somebody gets knocked up. That's usually how these things go. That, One of those three, every time. That That's that's pretty accurate, yes. <laughs> Do you want to make specific guesses? I kind of want to point my finger at Caden. Hey, Caden ain't I'm blowing just... anything up. I'm just going <laughs> to... Something might blow up, but he ain't blowing any buildings up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, come on. <laughs> There might be an ejaculation. <laughs> we have come full circle. I, I now. was thinking that laugh, too. I was holding it in. <laughs> but yes, there, there is a very good chance Caden might have a little extra fun at this festival. I, I'm, I'm not going to say, because I don't know. Probably not. He might That's become a great the feeling that like one that one of the uh, villains this time around is probably go- is going to destroy something. I don't know what. Nay, do you have anything to add? I'm just really sad that I can't go to the counting booth because I'd probably know the number. Oh, uh, is it number seven? Uh, no, it's got to be between fifty and hundred. Is it going to be fifty-seven? I have no clue what it's going to be. Uh, Scholar will decide. I have a number set in my mind and I hope it's right because I've been sitting on it for the entire week mm. there's one more thing in the festival there's the tea tent a fancy, she- t- t- a t- fancy tea shop that only appears once a year at the Lon Lon Festival which is the best tea in the land so that, that'll be interesting it's going to be a tent. lot of people going there to feel yeah. fancy you think, and enjoy you good think tea. somebody would try to replicate these tea recipes I don't know yeah jeez you know considering they're supposed to be the tastiest in the land, but... Apparently nobody can get it right. Well, well maybe they're imported from holodrum 
then that's very hard to come by. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think the Deku would make the nicest tea. Yeah, I could say the, this uh, tea tent could be run by a nice fluff character, Tea well, Oolong. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. Wait, hold on one second. Time out. When you say De- Deku make the best tea, are you meaning literally make the best tea? Uh, well, I'll never tell. <laughs> because there, there, there are so many things I can get from that. My, my previous character, Thea Oolong, she... I always pronounced tea. Her was tea. Uh, so... Are, are we saying Deku are literally tea now? Because no, I don't see why you can't make one into tea. They're a plant. Well, that seems awfully macabre when you really think about it. It grows back. No, just just saying Deku can be made into tea. It's like, is that what they do with their corpses? Well, we. Oh, this is kind of dark now. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> 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 now we move from the ROH discussion to Zelda discussion general Zelda discussion of the week as many of us know side quests are a very important part of the Zelda series there are a lot of big side quests going from the very first game with the almighty task you were given of giving the letter to the old lady which gives you potions, which are very important to that game. So I ask you three, what are the best and probably worst side quests in Zelda in the Zelda series? In terms of what I feel, the, my two favorites, and they're for completely different reasons, are the is the side quest for receiving the I don't remember what it's called, but it's the strongest sword in Oracle of Ages. You have to go through a series of trading items with so many different people, having to find all the corresponding individuals to trade an item for a new item to eventually be able to strengthen your sword at a... The noble sword. The noble sword, thank you. uh, At at a pedestal of power. Hmm. And I just thought it was... It'd probably be considered inane and boring at this point in terms of gaming, but I just thought it was so extensive and that it followed you throughout the game that it felt very rewarding and really, I guess, eased the rest of the game. Not in the sense that it did, it did get easier, but you felt that you had earned a greater power to be to be able to combat evil. Oh, definitely. The yeah. the noble sword was a was very rewarding. It was a very good uh, balance of difficult side quests to very rewarding item. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one that I really like has nothing to do with actually bettering the great evil out there or becoming more powerful I really enjoyed the golden bug quest side quest from Twilight Princess just for the fact that I loved the character Agatha and that it was just it was a bug hunt you know, you found one bug in an area, and you know for a fact that that bug would be that the corresponding bug would be in the same area. So you just just have a little fun hunting. So were you excited when Agatha was announced as playable in Hyrule Warriors? Yes, I was extremely excited. Even though I can't, I I didn't get it. I just love the fact that she was considered as one of the one of the characters to be able to play. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have any least favorite? Quests? Side quests? I think... Nay and I can discuss it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you already brought up the golden bugs, and there were 20 of them, right? Mm-hmm. And the game, Twilight Princess. And you had a really nice bug journal that kept track of each bug and the location you found it in. Now, the other uh, quest in the same game was the quest for the 60 postals. And... That one, there was no journal, but there were three times as many things to collect, and they were all identi- like the identical item. So once you collected one, you didn't have any record of where you found it. So there was no way to, like, at the end of the game, you've collected a bunch of them, and then you kind of want to go back and get the rest, but you have no clue where to start. Uh, I think, Zello, you said you finished with 59 postals, right? Yes. Never... That last one eluded you. Yes, I printed out a list of all the locations of the pose, went through every single one, and could not find it. (laughs) 
That's right. And there's no sun song. There's no sun song in Twilight Princess. <sighs> and you can only catch them at night. That so, was so annoying. <laughs> a lot of the time, you would get to the ledge the um, Poe is on right as daylight comes, and you're just about to kill the Poe, and the sun rises, and you're, you you just say, oh, well, forget this. I'm not going to go away now, so I'm just going to leave the game idle until it's night again. Mm-hmm. I think we've all done that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it being extremely frustrating. And then you had the, <clears throat> and then you had the moments where it's like day and night just don't even transition in certain areas, like uh, Farron Woods. Yeah. Yeah, those ones were really annoying to get. Hmm. Very. But it was also kind of interesting with the Poe Quest too, because technically speaking, the Arbiter's Grounds dungeon just gives you four that you have to kill. Like to get to the boss, and then you just, and then you get the po- you get the souls, and you're just like, oh, hey, cool. It was a nice bonus. I will have to admit. Yeah. Indeed. Now, Nay, do you have a favorite side quest? Since you've talked oh. about least favorite. Hmm. Well, I was going to talk about actually the trade quest from Oracle of Ages, but. Zella, <laughs> Zella brought that up. <laughs> it's a very good one, so... Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, um, um, come back to me. Okay. Django, go. Um, I think my favorite ones were definitely the trade quests for Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, definitely Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, and to a very lesser extent, Majora's Mask, because you technically traded away the uh, town deeds for um, access to Deku flowers that net you pieces of heart. Oh yeah, that that was a pretty fun one. Yeah, especially like their reactions when you give them the paper. Either that, or you could you could do what I did whenever I start the game up. Every time I go, every time I start up a new run through of Majora's Mask, I always um, go to the flower first. And like get the piece of heart that's right in front of the clock tower, and then when night comes, I go to the uh, toilet stall in the hotel and just give it the paper. Yeah, which also gives you a heart piece. It's a, it also gives you a heart piece. That's true. And I love how they repeated like that specific quest in like three games, like Majora's Mask, Oracle of Ages, and uh, Skyward Sword. But no, the the trade quests to get like stronger swords, or in Major- or Majora's Mask's case, uh, more pieces of heart, because you can get a full heart container plus one piece just from doing well, plus two pieces if you think about it with the hand, just doing um, like just trading away all of them. So that's mm-hmm. kind of fun. Oh yeah. But then, as far as least favorite goes, um. I will not say I hated it completely, but I thought but I thought it was really interesting. Like the whole like that all the side quests to collect gratitude crystals and Skyward Sword tied into um another completely different side quest. Cause because for those of you that don't know, the whole thing is there is a demon living in Skyloft. And he's just like, no, wait, don't attack me. Like, my one wish is to be human, so to do that, I'll need, like, all these gratitude crystals. So basically, you have to go, you have to go around and uh, do all sorts of mundane activities for the people who live in that town, ta- for the people who live in that skybound town to, um, like, collect all these gratitude crystals. And it's, it's interesting because every five or so, he'll give you a reward of sorts, like either money or hearts or like medals for your inventory or something. And then when you collect every last one of them, he will he will become human, which which is like really odd. And just and just like monsters stop appearing in Skyloft at night, which I think okay cool you helped this guy, but the trade off wasn't worth it mm. because because like. Because most of the monsters that appeared in uh, Skyloft at night dropped materials that you could use to upgrade your items. Yeah. 
So that so that kind of put a dampening on things. But overall, like some some of them were fun, like, but most of them were like really mundane, where you just had to like some like someone like fifty percent of the quests were just like somebody dropped something below the cloud barrier, and you had to run down to the surface in order to just douse the location of the item and go grab it. Yeah, it's, I honestly would say that that was not one of my favorite things concerning the side quests. Just seems so basic. Yeah. And uh, as for myself, I think the favorite side quest I would have to go to is the always amazing Andrew Kafai side quest. Oh yeah. I'm kind of a surprised no one brought that one up. I was thinking, ah, this is my go-to one. Someone's gonna bring it up. No, no. I mean, it, it's a lot has been said about it, and it's honestly probably one of the best parts of Majora's Mask. As I will agree with you on that. Even though the reward for it is not exactly what I would call great, it it's more of the story than the reward. Yeah. Because because you think about it, is like you do you do have a commitment that you need to satisfy with um getting this couple back together, like a couple minutes before the moon destroys the world. Right. But um, but even with that sort of commitment, it was interesting that you still had uh, side commitments that you could take care of, like and like on the last night you could either like you could grab or on the last day you could grab the Keton mask from the curiosity shop salesman and grab like priority mail, which you can take either to the which I it was interesting because you could either take it to the postman who will get who like after he delivers it. He'll give you the uh, postman's hats, or you can take it to the person that he would have delivered to anyway, Cafe's mother, and just get an empty bottle with Chateau Romani in it that does not last. But you, can you have to turn back the clock. Yeah, yeah within uh, which you can sell it for two hundred rubies. Which, hey. But then you don't keep the rubies either. Well, you can put them in the bank. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. <laughs> so oh, you, yeah. you get rewarded for it. Well, in that case, yeah. You, you mean if you consider those as rewards for the quest, yeah. Yeah, because because te- technically you you get like a lot of stuff. Two, two out of three rewards. Let's just say that. I, I mean, technically, if you really think about it, the whole quest, will give you four masks, a couple of heart pieces, and a bottle. Yeah. True. I. But if you just go from point A to point B, you're getting just two masks out of it. Yeah. Or you could, or you could screw up completely, like I did the first time I ever did the quest, which was save the bomb shop lady. Actually, I forgot about that mask. That'd be five masks that's related to that quest, well, or six. There's a Let's lot. See. There is a lot of things were uh, involved in that one little side quest. Cafe's mask, blast mask, Keaton mask, uh, couple's mask, all my mask. Hat. Oh yeah, all night. That's only if you thwart the robbery, right? Yeah, but it's related to the entire. You can't do the quest, so it's kind of related. Eh, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll go with it. Why not? <laughs> but as far as my least favorite side quest, it kind of ties in a little bit with what I was talking about last week. The ice arrows in Ocarina of Time, very, oh, yeah. very useless. The place where you get the ice arrows, the Gerudo, Gerudo Fortress training area, extremely difficult, and and the reward for it is just not that good. I mean, it's not a, it's not, it's not. I mean, it's just not a good area. That's true. I, I've always never really been a big fan of it. Even though, if you want all your items, you gotta get it, but there's really no reason to get it. Alright, uh, any last thoughts there? Uh, there was one side quest in Skyward Sword that I thought was pretty funny that I thought of a, just a bit ago. Okay. Um, that was the uh, Love Triangle side quest. Oh, between, yes. Yeah, between, um, what are their names? Uh, Cow- Cowlin? Colin? I think it was Colin. Colin, like, yeah. Yeah, Colin, um, Pippet, and... Karain, I 
can't believe I know their names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, there was Pit Pit and Karain were kind of the they, they had a crush on each other, but they wouldn't it, like weren't able to admit it because you know it's a video game. And um, then there was Colin, who was uh, Groose's short little friend, and so. Um, I don't remember the details of the quest very much, but I remember there were um, two endings. You can only get one, but you get the reward anyway. Oh, um, yeah. You could either um, <laughs> give the love letter. Um, I think it was you give Colwyn's love letter to Karain, which makes Pippet um, admit that he loves Karain, and they end up together, and Colwyn ends up crying. Or... You could give the uh, Colin's love letter to the hand in the toilet because there is a hand in the toilet because that's a running gag in the Zelda series. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and the the hand in the toilet starts some haunting Colin, and I much prefer that ending than the cheesy love story ending. Either way, you're still getting like five gratitude crystals. Yeah. Either way, you get the same reward, and the the other ending with the haunted ghost hand haunting Colin is just really satisfying and hilarious because um, there's some pretty funny dialogue that I don't remember but I remember laughing at it on that note that very strange note we move on to dramatic post readings hooray oh goodness <laughs> Zello I believe you're going first would you like get into character would you like to uh, give us context of the post you're reading and who you're reading for uh I am reading one of Nack's posts within the thread called The Abandoned Warehouse. He's role-playing. Uh, he's interacting with Karis, and it is the fourth post down. And... Sure. Keep watching. Does that mean you won't share? Hayes gave a fake pout, making mental notes to seal some of the books in the clock town just to tease Karis. You haven't he hadn't quite figured out the worth of the book, though. The Rita wasn't exactly a bookworm in a sense, despite being an artifact collector. But it didn't hurt to read from time to time. When he was in his little nest, anyway. It was the only place he really felt safe. Away from people, his family, even this group he came back to often. That's unfortunate! There will be a lot of pockets to pick, though. Maybe a dance is a bonus if you're a here. <laughs> His cerulean eyes held some mischievous twinkles, giving a soft chuckle as the human girl tried to blow her stubborn fangs out of her eyes. Hayes valued the freedom and the exploration. He liked the rush of flying away into the night after stealing something. That was why the Rito boy found it strange for Karis to never leave the town. To his knowledge, anyway. Nevertheless, it wasn't his business to ask, ask such questions. All thieves worked in their own way, after all. Quietly, Hayes moved himself closer to Karis as he crossed his arms, giving an annoyed look for response. About a few... <coughs> about a few <laughs> it's really hard to get back into the voice, excuse me. <laughs> about a few days or so, wasn't quite re- long, really. Ugh. I was in Hyrule Castle City, shopping. Nobles were flashing their shiny trinkets from left and right. So much, it was beginning to bug me like hell. The reader ran his hand through his navy ha- blue hairs before tilting his head to the side out of curiosity at the human. <clears throat> Why? I am interesting enough to be on your mind? Hayes asks with a teasing smirk. <laughs> good post. <laughs> Very good post. Very entertaining. <laughs> All right. Nay, your turn. All right. I am reading a post by Alistair, who is the Prince of Hyrule. Um, and played by Obsidian Dragon. And the thread is called Sweet Freedom, with a question mark at the end. And the characters involved, the other ones, are Rex, played by Ryo, who is um, a villainous character, and he has an interesting ability that I don't believe I should, can divulge at this time, but... Probably not. It's something to look out for in the future. If you're going to... So follow Rex. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Maro. Maro is Alistair and Faye's butler. 
played by Erez, and then there's Ray Solnez, who's played by Nakul, and I believe he's the I believe he's the twins' magic tutor. Um, he's also he's also a musician too. And he's also a musician. Hopefully he'll play with us at the festival. Anyway. So without further ado. He didn't know about avoiding the stall in particular, if just for the pretty flower that worked behind it. But if her garbage was garbage, then it was garbage. He looked upwards as he tried to see where the hat, see the hat that was, of course, impossible to see unless he took it off, and which he wasn't a, wasn't going to do. Is it really that bad? Maybe I was too charmed by the lady's pretty smile that I was conned into looking like a total doofus in the middle of the market. Oh man, wait until Faye caught wind of that one. She never needed to know. He needed to ditch this hat and fast. While he tried to ponder a musical instrument that sounded cool to him, the stranger went on about how famil- how he looked familiar. Alistair froze, twitching. I, uh, I do? He had that innocent smile of, I don't know how I could possibly be known by anyone. But then the fellow went on about a ballerina, and Alistair's confused and worried look became a blank stare for half a second until he laughed. I look like a dancer. Oh, how nice. I bet I could get a lot of girls that way. I mean, well, I think you're mistaken. He did a half-assed ballerina twirl. Light on my toes, though. Wouldn't you agree? So, you were asking about an... Aw, crap. Interrupted, he was sad to see just how fast he had been discovered by Mr. Big and Mr. Little. Oh, and they had even brought the hunting hound with them to track him down. Wow, they were serious about catching him this time. He wanted to clap and congratulate them. But they were already coming over and jumping onto some weird story about brothers and training. He almost wanted to screw with them both by playing dumb like he had no idea who they were, but his manners got the better of the hymn, and he played along. Grabbing the kokiri, he lifted him right off the ground and onto his shoulders with a grin. Upset, you say? I thought I was done for the day. It's lunchtime, after all, probably. You want a piggyback, little bro? You can ride me all the way to the training grounds if you want to. <laughs> oh. That was not the point. That was probably that was appropriate. <laughs> that was probably not the way we were supposed to interpret that. I have to I, I, say immediately from hearing you read, read it that way, I thought of Girahim. I, oh, I couldn't do the um, I couldn't do the British voice, so I decided to do that instead. That that was much better. I I yeah. have to say, <laughs> very dramatic, wasn't it? <laughs> Man. And on that note, I believe that ends this edition of the ROH podcast. I would like to thank May, Zemo, and Django for joining me <laughs> and for providing us with plenty of entertainment. Join us next week as we probably talk about the festival some more and hope everyone has a good day and good night.